Well, I think we got two working trucks. So let's take a look at the Mark 15 here. So, took a piece of scrap wood, cut an L channel in it, and I've got a jig so I can put the gears in it. And putting the gears in is pretty easy. Same as the 14, except for, I don't know, slightly different arrangement. So we go 18, 16, then we've got a pair of 12s. Then we've got a pair of 12s again. And then we've got a 14. And what this gives us is an axle spacing. Oops. Gives us an axle spacing like this. So like the 14 right, right there, these two are closer to each other. And then that 14 tooth gear right there spreads this one out just a little farther away makes kind of a friendly looking side frame i think i like that i like that way of having one so so they're not centered they don't need to be centered it adds more character if they're offset a little bit okay so then this time instead of this one has a 3d printed end on on the one side this one does not this one prints out and you get a flat cover like that, just flat, and a box like that. This time I decided, you know, I'm just going to glue on that end. That way, I don't have to worry about a flimsy piece like this thick. And, I, and the styrene is really super easy to tap. So now I can lay this on here. Okay, now I've got my gears in there. And now we're using these Atlas type wheels, which are 16 teeth. So I don't know, this thing is going to be. Yeah, I have to think about the, the math a little bit. I think it is going to be slower than the 14, but it's going to be easier for power transmission. So that's, that's what I think. We'll find out. Okay, so now I've got nice, and this time, let's get down here, let's, let's get closer. This time, these guys. Okay. So who's who here? Here's a, here is a 14, as you can see by its box body. Now this time I wanted to angle the end up just a little bit like that because we've talked about like Cato and and Athern Atlas where their trucks are getting to be so low profile that now they're they're hitting the tops of rails or the magnetic encouplers that I'm using which on the KD instructions on code 100 they just drop in between the rails but now can't do that because those the newer locomotives will they'll drag along there and then you got to follow the bottom of them anyway so we get this okay now i got a cover this cover really super flexible this time and like the last one screw into the end there and it will screw into this side i haven't mounted the worm yet worm will be the same thing and i'll we'll have the oops i'll have the cover Hold it. I did make these so we should have less times where all the gears fall out at once. Alright, get in there. Okay, until so it's locked down. Okay, so now anyways, and then it'll fasten there. And then when when I'm when I've got these done to this far with the worm in it and everything. I am going to glue these shut. These things are disposable. If I ever have to take this apart for maintenance, I'm just going to, I'm going to toss it. By that time, I'll have another design for it. It'll be even better. And so, to give them extra strength to handle high torque that the Rev 1 motor can put out, I am going to 
I'm going to glue the box together. And I'm, I spent too much time on these trying to secure this, these ends. And I spent days getting that just right to get to here. Now, this is a good truck, though. It does work really good. These guys, once they're ready and they don't need to be open again, they're not going to be open again. Because you can still see on here, that was the power pickup system. There is an insulator and a copper strip. This one does not have any of that back there. This one, on the outside, there's going to be a hanger. And then, I think on the... We can make these guys, these bearings here, which are double as our brakes. These are, these are bearing brakes. That's why they're radioactive, because they're bearing brakes. What you do is when you engage them, the bearings, they like... They make it harder to turn the axle instead of having the wheel rub on a shoe. The axle itself gets harder to turn. And there's a bunch of different ways they can do that. People experiment with stuff like that all the time. And those are, in theory, they're depleted uranium. But these, these are going to stay together. They're not going to need to come apart. Um... To add grease, if that was necessary, I can put it in the back, or I can put it in through the window. Now remember, the secret is you can't make this without the window. When we put the worm in, I'll remind you why you cannot have this truck without that window. And people are like, well, what's that for? Why can't you do it? Because you can't. It is a part of building a cure box, which will we'll do something to uh, go over the math for building gearboxes without using gear module in, in like a CAD program the computer doesn't need the window a human building it you need the window and it's not for looking through we'll talk about gear math later I'll let you think about why you would have to have that window and why it matters for the worm since we don't need access to it and so unlike other locomotives ours doesn't have worm cap we don't, we don't need it. Once the worm gear is hooked up inside here, it may droop a little bit, but it doesn't matter. There's no, we don't need a cap for it. And that's where, that's where we're at. These are starting to, well, getting the operational truck, it's the first step. If you can get that far, you can go all the way with this. And if you can scavenge a couple of trucks of your own from any other project, you could start practicing a build on scratch build locomotive there you have it